Hi everybody, welcome to Wool and Wine, episode 31. I'm Tammy. I'm Claudia. I'm Janet. And welcome back to all of our viewers. And if you're new, we're super happy to have you. And it is December, what day is it? The 5th. Yeah. So it is a cloudy, rainy day today. <laughs> the usual weather forecast. Yeah. So, but we're really happy to be here today and yeah. show you all of our things that we're working on and what we're we finished and, and what we finished. And <laughs> we have a couple it's, things. Last time I was on on Sleeve Island, well, I still am, but I'm minus two sleeves now. <laughs> oh, yay! <laughs> yes. and I'm off of Sleeve Island and I'm Woo! so excited about it. <laughs> Uh, I'm still so. a little bit on Sleeve Island, but it's okay. I don't mind Sleeve Island. <laughs> yeah, before we get started, Sorry. that's a good idea. Uh -huh. yes. Cheers to all of our viewers. Yes. Happy holidays. Mm. Wow. Mm. That's really good. That's delicious. We'll talk about mm -hmm. that at the very end. But yeah. mm, yum. Yum, yum. Okay. Yum. So, this will be a typical episode. We'll talk about what we're wearing, what we've finished, what we're working what on, we're working and it's on. your turn. Yeah, no, it's my turn to talk. <laughs> it's your turn. You take it away, Claudia. Okay. Well, I am wearing the Cummerbund sweater by Anka Strick. And the yard... So I did a size 48 and the yarn I'm using it, I used, sorry, is a Fibra Natura Whisper Lace. And I held that with um, fairy, oh, the colorways fairy dust. And I held it with Knit Picks Aloft in the colorway silver. And you'll see a little video. Oh, but I'll stand up here and see if you can get a better closer look oh, but nice. I, I love this sweater mm -hmm. i just love it mm -hmm. i mean i followed the pattern as they suggested so you basically turn this under and create kind of a double-sided hem and then also on the sleeve and i don't know i just it feels so good yeah. it really does and I actually have another one on the needles that's been there since last year. <laughs> and then I had to take the needles and cable out because I needed to use them for something else. Oh my. And then I wasn't sure I was going to do it. And then I, so after I put this on, I said, yeah, I think I need to make that out of this yarn. So it'll be... You'll be come. It'll, it'll come around sooner or later. Yeah, <laughs> you used a couple lace weights, and yes. it made it really nice and silky, and and it's so soft, soft and, and very drapey. Drapey, yes, I love it. And I really love made it. it beautiful. Yeah, fabric. Yeah. Right. So in the pattern, she calls for DK plus something, and it's a very tight gauge for the yarn that she recommended. And that's what I ended up using, DK with mohair when yeah. I made it. And, it's and it makes it dense. like, it's very dense. It's a, a very, very warm sweater. And mine doesn't drape nearly like yours does. So yeah. that's another thing to note about patterns. It's not necessarily what the designer uses and what they recommend. It's getting the fabric that you yes, like because that is just amazing. It is. Mm -hmm. I just love it. And the yarn I'm using for the second one, it's mohair with, it's a, it's a, a fingering sport weight. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping, and you know, just a section I had done, it is, it's much denser than this, but it's a 20 stitch gauge, so it shouldn't be too bad. Right. I don't know. be better than mine if it's yeah. fingering slash sport, because yeah. mine is full on DK. Yeah. With yeah. No hair. Yeah. But I don't think it's I don't think it it'll be, be quite drapey, yeah. but it'll be less Yeah. Yeah. I mean I I laughed about I thought mine was like body armor <laughs> when I first made it. It's not that bad. It's really not. It's not. But I had a hard time wearing it in the house. Do you, you I, get too warm? I, I wore it the other day and I was fine. I don't know, maybe last year was it last year or the year before when 
Because we made them really close to the same time. I made mine, I, I started mine January of last year. Okay, so it was last year then, because you made yeah. yours first, and uh -huh. as you were making it, I'm like, mm, I'm I'm going out and getting that pattern right now. I want to <laughs> you want to make that, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. really ingenious the way she does the the, neckline. the V neck, yeah. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, it's a it's super beautiful it's super super neat. Yeah, and I think in my next one, then you do this. You did um, ribbing instead of I did. At the mm -hmm. cuff, and I think my next one I'm going to do ribbing also, just so they look a little bit different. The neck will still look the same, but yeah. that'll give the body a different shape a little bit. Well, you remember um, my ribbing, I ended up folding it under and doing what she said, but because it was DK with mohair and then DK without mohair on the, un the back uh -huh. side of it, um, it was thick. It was bulky. And it's like, seriously, do we really want bulky around our waist? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> I went, I was like, no, thank you. So I didn't use the mohair on the back side, and it still was bulky. Mm -hmm. So that's why I ripped it out and did ribbing. Oh, okay. It was okay. just one layer and yeah. it was ribbing. <laughs> yeah. No, well, I'm sure that looks good too, though. And then mm -hmm. I didn't like. The folded cuff with the ribbing at the bottom, I thought it kind of just looked yeah, you needed a little off kilter. It didn't look balanced. So yeah. I ripped the sleeves back and did ribbing on the sleeves too. <laughs> so that, that sweater got a lot of surgery. Yeah, I think that's what uh, <laughs> Melissa did this too. And I think that's what she did. She did ribbing also, I think. But anyway. Yeah, I can't remember. I feel like hers might be blue. But I'm it totally is. drawn. It's sort of a teal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, what are you wearing? I'm wearing the Wilfrida by Venki Ruald. And this was a finish from the last episode, but I was not wearing it. So, I'm wearing it this time. That color looks so true on the camera. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, this is the Brooklyn Tweed Arbor, which is a DK weight yarn and the colorway is Mesa and there is a video <laughs> so so you can get a feel for it so this was the sweater that had a really nice um, gauge it was I think 16 stitches for four inches and I used a US 10 and made this beautiful cable pattern around the top and it's just it makes the sweater yeah it does so it's, it's really beautiful really pretty. so i really mm -hmm. like it so what are you wearing well <laughs> i'm wearing the wildwood sweater by heidi may and i knit the size 42 and it's there's plenty of ease in it i love this sweater i was a little worried when i looked at the pat the photo that heidi has on the pattern page because i saw her gauge was off from mine my gauge was off her gauge was spot on because she's the designer <laughs> but the row gauge um looked like it was a lot deeper and i kept checking as I got through the pattern, like how many more rows I had to mm -hmm. go because I was afraid the armpits were gonna be super low and I'm not a fan of that. Um, the other thing about this pattern was all of the, the increases, so it's top down and all of the increases are within about an inch. So it's about six rows in the mm -hmm. color work at the very top and I was real worried about that. So I ended up blocking it I think I was just probably through the color work and I blocked it just to make sure that it was actually gonna lay flat. But I gotta tell you, this pattern is a delight to knit. Um, there are no long floats. This would be, it, I, I'm gonna step out there and say this would be a good first color work sweater because there are no long floats. And she did a beautiful job, you know, with all those increases being at the beginning, you have to be kind of heads down focused for that little bit. Mm -hmm. But I use stitch markers between every repeat and it was kind of easy to keep track of 
where nice. where those went. But um, the wool that I used on this was um, Stephen West's West Wool, and that's the tandem. So this is a DK weight sweater, and it is some lovely yarn. This darker color is brackish, and then the lighter color is called glass. And I have an entire skein of the brackish left, and I only purchased one skein of the glass, and I bet I've got maybe 30, 30 something yards left, so it didn't really take a whole lot. This would be a good um, stash buster, really, mm -hmm. you know. That was so... Mm -hmm. It's really, really good, yeah. And uh -huh. I did, I think I did everything to pattern except for the length because, you know, you know what your magic numbers are and that's what you do. And that's just what you do. <laughs> right. Usually, yeah. Yeah. So, what you got next? Well, I have a finished object. You guys have been following me on this for a while. And it is the Robinia by Anne Ventzel. And there's a video with me wearing it. And and um, I use the uh, I did the 120 centimeter, which I think comes out to about 48 inches. And I use Cascade Ario Tweed in navy. And that's more on an errant or bulky side. And then I used uh, the Isiger Echo Soft in the Codeway 6S. <laughs> and, then, and I held that with the Pearl Soho Tussock in the colorway T Rose. And here it is. And oh, that's beauty. I, for, I haven't put the tag on the back. I got so excited about it getting <laughs> done. It's like, I'm, I'm just going to wear it. <laughs> so here oh my goodness. we are. I'll tell you what. This was a this was an easy pattern, and, and it just it fits so nice. And I don't know what else I can say about it. I I thought the pattern was really fun, and I love the yarns I use. They are both really nice. When I put this on, I told these guys I said. Man, I feel like I'm wearing a glove. It just feels so soft when I have it on. I haven't noticed that with any other sweater I have. Man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is lovely. So here, it has a tw has tweedy bits in it, but they're not very visible. You know, they don't take away at all from the rest of the sweater, so. Oh no, they add to it. Yeah. It's just enough to add interest to it. Yeah. That's gorgeous. So, there it is. I can't say I made any modifications. It's so beautiful to the point where when you were wearing that the other day, I decided I want to make one. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm already picking out the yarns. Yeah, yeah. Well, yes. it's going to be beautiful. Love it. Yeah, so I should have brought the rest of my my Isiger for you <laughs> so you can get it on the needles. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Goodness gracious. So my finish is I need to go get them. Hold on. Oh, that's right. You put him over across the, oh, yeah. the table. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the first one that I have that is a finish is the Field Sweater by Camilla Vaud. And here mm. it is. I really like that. The tweed. Yeah, that's beautiful. That is really gorgeous, good. gorgeous, yeah. gorgeous. Yeah, and I have a video of of this of me wearing it. Wow, so, so pretty. You did a great job. Yeah, thank you. 
Very happy to be done with this. <laughs> yeah, so it's a labor of love. <laughs> and I'm not really looking forward to doing any more of these. I love <laughs> that. She just came out with mitts. I saw those. I was like, no, I think I'll pass. I'm done with the, the little, what are they, wheats? No, grains. I'm done grains, with grains for a grains. while. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. but it is a very beautiful pattern. Mm. Uh, so, I used three different yarns, so I held two together. Um, I had the Drops Alpaca held with the Barocco Ariel, which was a lace weight. Um, the colors for the Drops Alpaca was Nougat, and then the other color was Copper um, for the Barocco Lace. And then I used the Knit Picks City Tweed DK in Colorway Snowbank. And I just, Thought this, the colors and everything went really well oh, together. Oh, they do. They Gorgeous. Do. And so happy with it because it just reminded me of a wheat field mm -hmm. yeah, as well. Yeah. <laughs> so I do recommend it, even though it was a labor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I kind of recommend it, I guess. Kind of. <laughs> For a more experienced sweater. Not a beginner sweater. No, True. Not a beginner sweater. Not a beginner, not a beginner not. sweater. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh all right well my finish is actually two combined and it's the sacred sheep hat by caitlin hunter otherwise known as boyland knitworks and i am knitting gifts so i have two different hats oh. that look very very different but it's the same pattern and i think they're just gorgeous wow um i'll tell you what look at look at the top of this that's pretty isn't wow. that just spectacular that's, yes Looks like a kaleidoscope. It, it does, does, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So pretty. I'll show you the black one also real quick. Oh, look wow. at those colors. I mean, that is just so good. It is. Um, so the yarn I used on these is the um, Knit Picks Wool of the Andes. So both of these are worsted weight. This pattern is really awesome. It comes in different weights of yarn. And then within the different weights of yarn, there are three different sizes. Huh. So wow. I know, right? Mm -hmm. wow. It's and it this color work chart again is perfect for someone who hasn't done color work. Now I did make a modification because I really like that double folded brim on um, a winter hat when I give it as a gift. Uh, I don't know how deep they're going to want to wear it, but I, uh, I always want ears to be toasty warm, mm -hmm. right? So I did, I think, three inches of ribbing, and then I folded it under and knit two together all the way around. And it's so easy when it's in ribbing that you can't get it twisted because if you're picking up a knit on the front, it's the pearl in the back. on the row behind it. And yeah. I just, I had my little mantra that I was like, mm -hmm. it's a knit, pick up a pearl. It's a pearl, pick up a knit. And I did that all the way around just so I wouldn't twist the brim. But they're so good. Um, all right, so the white color on here is... Patton's Classic Wool DK Superwash in a pale gray color. I think it might even be called silver. I'm not quite sure. And I held that together with Drops Kid Silk in white. So this is really, it's not a pure white, although it sort of looks like it because of the fluff on top. And then this one is the Sapphire Heather. And I held... I didn't hold it. I knit that along with Hobie's Manaya. So if you've watched for a while, you'll recall that I bought this to knit my girlfriend Susan a Killer Queen cowl. Mm -hmm. And I knit that, and this is the leftovers, which it's, you know, almost a full ball. Yes. And the colors in here are so good. Mm -hmm. So remember when I knit that hat for Michael? 
Yeah. Yes. Um, I, we went out with them the other day and it was cold and he put it on and I just felt like the bottoms of his ears were showing. And I'm like, dude, I really want to knit another hat to make it a little warmer. And he goes, well, remember, I like jewel tones. So I don't know about you, but I think these are jewel tones. Mm -hmm. Right? Looks like it to me. So I'm going to mm -hmm. ask him if he likes those. I mean, the top part of it looks like a sunset to it me. It does. It's just so, so it's gorgeous. gorgeous. Yeah, but, is. yeah, so anyway. How can he not like it? I think, well, he's you know, guy. He's it's a guy. A guy. Know. It's a guy. <laughs> it might, I mean, it's, I don't even know what you would call that. It's almost like a fleur de lis. Yeah, it's pretty. But it's just such a cool looking pattern mm -hmm. that, and it's such a classic shape. So I didn't make them slouchy. She also, not only does she have three different yarn weights and three different sizes within each one, you can make them three different heights. So oh, she's got wow. crown, three different crown heights for a real fitted beanie, a medium be beanie, and a slouchy beanie. So the thought that went into that pattern it's was... amazing. Yeah, it really, really was. So Very cool. Yeah. All right, so... I don't have any more finishes. Okay, so do you? I have one more finish. Woohoo! <sighs> yep, so exciting. The Solare by Hohi Locatelli. Oh, that's that is so gorgeous. good. <laughs> and I keep thinking I'm going to have to make it now. Yeah, it's... It's a beautiful sweater. I love it. So yeah. I worked like crazy because I really wanted to get the get off of Sleeve Island. So I got them done and uh, oh, so happy. So I used the Brooklyn Tweed Arbor, which is the DK weight, and I held it with a lace weight, um, which was a Hobie Alpaca Soft Lace in the colorway Sage Melange. And did I say the Brooklyn Tweed Arbor was in colorway Rainier? I don't mm -hmm. know if I did. So um, putting these two together has made this a really Luxurious. softer. It's so like... this is the Brooklyn Tweed Arbor that I have here in the Mesa. So it feels like a nice wool sweater. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't feel nearly oh, as soft yeah. right. and squishy as this um, sweater yeah. here, which this was a DK weight pattern, but, you know, um, so holding those two together either way, I probably could have got gauge even if I'd used DK, but oh, I love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's I highly gorgeous. recommend the pattern. Yeah. It's mm. very straightforward, beautiful. I mean, the sleeves and everything just turned out perfect. Mm -hmm. Really nice. So, that mm. is beautiful. Thank you. Yes, it is. You'll be able to wear that for holiday parties. Yeah. Okay, well, so I have two finishes. You have another after that, or no? That that's it. Oh, isn't that a finish? Oh, I do have another. Finish. Okay. Wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All righty then. So my next one is the Home Cardigan by Kadri. and I knit the forty-three point five inch. And I got buttons to put on it. Gorgeous. Oh, wow. So, so no modifications that I can think of, except I put five buttons instead of four. Uh, it looks really oh, nice. Oh, those, those buttons, buttons are, are perfect. perfect. I got those on Amazon. So Cute. they came in a box. She recommended a certain size button. Uh -huh. And I did a search on Amazon for that, and it's a box of wood buttons, and they're all different colors, and um, some of them have print, but it's not just, it's like they're such a perfect, yeah. yes. they just blend right in. So this, you can tell it's kind of drapey. So this was Drops Wish in the color number 11, which is tobacco. And it's very, um, there are, maybe it's almost tweedy, 
but it's a cotton alpaca wool. Yeah. And the cotton is a high percentage in there, but the cotton is actually the tube that the wool and alpaca are blown into. Yeah, merino cotton and baby alpaca. Yeah, so the it's the tube that all those fibers are blown into. And this stuff is spit spliceable. And I mentioned that last time. So for anybody who's going to be working with this, the way you spit splice it is there are no um, strands yeah. to separate. You have to use sharp scissors and trim it straight up the middle. And I, I did it about three inches on each end and got it really pretty wet with water and rubbed it until my hands and the yarn were dry. And I let it lay, so I waited, you know, I probably had three or four yards or meters laying there when I decided to spit splice it so it would have plenty of time to get, for sure, be good and dry before I knit with it. And you can't find where that was. Mm -hmm. Nice. So, yeah, I'm hoping that it wears as well as it seems like it will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a nice thick yarn. Yeah, it is. It, it is. Be a nice it's sturdy sweater. So, so I made the same sweater, but mine wasn't as as um, uh, firm. Thick. Firm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's, so it's it's drapier, and I like. My cardigans yeah. to be more, more heavy, like those. more yeah, mm -hmm. more like that. I think this will be almost outer wear. There's a Christmas party coming up, and I when I in the video of me wearing it, um, I just put it on with nothing underneath of it. But um, I intend I've got a silk blouse that's this color, cool that I think will be pretty with a pair of high waisted black dress pants. So it's not made to wear with these jeans, but. I actually, I had a certain outfit in mind for it. So that'll be beautiful. Yeah, it will. All right, so you have another finish? I do have one other finish. And it's just a little finish. I made another spa day face cloth. Ooh, so pretty. That's and it that? really is. Here it is. And I could I could wash my face with that. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm gonna have to make so, one. Yeah. yeah. So I made this as a, a Christmas gift. And I mean I just I love the little pattern. The yarn that I used for that was this. I love this cotton. <laughs> and I noticed they sell this at the Hobby Lobby here in the US. And it is very soft. Mm -hmm. It's just perfect for a face cloth. Mm -hmm. Like for all face cloths from here on out, this is the yarn I'm going to use because of it being extra soft. Um, the colorway on this is um, Stonewash. Oh, that's a good color. It looks like Stonewash and jeans, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's a fun knit. It takes a little longer than you would think to make a little square. <laughs> there, was, there, was, there was some cursing involved in there. I mean, I, I think there that. was. So I, did, I did kind of screw up the pattern at one point and had to keep tinking back and tinking back and then figuring out where, what, where I was in the pattern. And then there might have been wine involved. Maybe doing it incorrectly for a row or two after that, then redoing it. But other than that, I mean, it was I fun. Think that took a while. Plus, plus, it just takes a little bit of time, but it is just well worth it. Goodness gracious. Oh, my. <laughs> That's so funny. Right. Wow. Okay. So this um, next is a finish and a whip, and I'm just going to show them both to you at the same time. It just makes sense to do it that way. So it's a self-drafted Christmas stocking, and I'll put a picture in here. And um, the reason I put the picture in is because I created a few years ago a spreadsheet for different um, winter Christmassy designs. designs. And 
It is on my Ravelry page. If anybody's interested, I am not publishing a pattern. I, I don't feel that strongly about it. If you want it, you can feel free to go and get it however you want to from my Ravelry. So let me ask you a question. When you say self-drafted, does that mean you took a pattern and you modified it? No, or? I decided I needed a really- So you created really, this one. Yeah, I just needed a really big Christmas stocking. Our fireplace upstairs is big. It's really big and it, the mantle is huge and it's decorated and I can't find stockings at the store that I want and all the patterns that I looked at on Ravelry looked like they were too small. This one is 9 inches wide and 30 inches long but I used a size 10, a US 10 needle on it. Um, and I also, so the yarn I used You'll have seen the pattern, but there's this, um, there's the reindeer with some, <laughs> I guess they're snowflakes. Um, another checkerboard pattern, a selbu, sort of selbu um, flower. Another checkerboard, a little diamond thing that I actually use this same diamond in my, that Wyeth-ish um, that I made a while ago and because I've recently learned how to do the short row heel I did the short row heel on this so I started to tell you about the yarn I'll just That's toss just it over there beautiful creation it's, uh -huh. <laughs> it's interesting isn't it um, yes. so it's loops and threads impeccable and I'm using multiple colorways, as you can tell. So I actually brought all of them. Here they are. So it's amethyst, deep green, gold, Merlot maybe? Um, no, Claret. And then uh, white. It's actually an off-white, but it's what they call white. So this is 100% acrylic yarn and it's gonna be nice and sturdy. So I started the second one, and what I'm trying to do is just use up my yarn. So the other one started out with red, and then it had um, mm. green oh, yeah. reindeer, but I'm doing green, and that's the purple color with the gold and the red. So they're just holding it up just so people can see. Oh, yes. that's cute. They're the identical are... in size, and I'm just ready to start on the short row heel on this. So that'll be the next thing I do, and that'll be in green. Because I really, after doing that, I've got this much red left, and that'll be enough to do the next set of um, the, the roses, or the cart, or um, what are those, the other flowers? The selby flowers? Um, like, or, or, um, or like a snowflake. They look kind of they, like snowflakes. They look like snowflakes. Yeah, what's that other flower that cats are, it's poison to cats. Um, a poinsettia? Poinsettia. That's what I had in mind when I oh. was making the leaves, a poinsettia leaf. So those are purple, these are red, but there'll be enough to finish um, the next little bits on that. So. Anyway, I thought it would be easier to show it like that. So yeah, it's there was no pattern. I mean, it's just a ginormous sock, sock with color work. <laughs> and um, you could wear it as a hat. Oh, you could. <laughs> That'd be kind of crazy. So with it hanging, it's so big. Yeah. It it's it hangs really pretty nice. Um, but I think I'm going to take a little bit of fiber fill and stick it in, and just very thin layer up, just to give it a little. Mm. Mm. That's just a good to make idea. It look yeah. a little nicer yeah. With, yeah. with it hanging. Uh -huh. So anyway, yeah, that's it for finishes. Cool. Yeah, I know you've got whips. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah I do. Whips galore. Whips, whips, whips. Okay, so. I'm still working on the silk moon and I have one sleeve finished. <laughs> so I'm good job. Working on the second sleeve. <laughs> but um, 
the yarn I am using is oh, the Soup Moons ba made by Agionet, and I'm making the size 46 and I use Juniper Moon Farm uh, Patagonia Organic Merino. That's a, a mouthful. mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> and a mouthful. the color is anthracite and then I'm holding that with the Drops Kid Silk um, in the colorway Blue Wind. So let's see. Oops, it's all tangled up of course, right? There we go. So oh I am making progress, serious progress. I got the sleeve done. And so now I just working on the second sleeve. You're getting close. Oh I'm goodness. close. Yes, yeah. you are. So is that a three quarter length sleeve? No. It's actually you know what I did because when I, I blocked the body, it really blocked out quite a bit. So I made the sleeve shorter and assuming that it's going to block out too. And if it ends up being a like, this length, yeah, or bracelet I'll be fine length, or with whatever. It. Yeah, I'll be fine with it. So that's so beautiful. Let's see. Though I did make one modification, and I just remembered this the other day. So on the the um, raglan raglan increases. So she had a a um, pearl, a knit through the back loop, and a pearl, and then you do your increases on both sides. But um, you know, with this, as fluffy as this is, you couldn't see it. And it was kind of a pain to do. So I just changed <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I just changed it up. And I think I just did uh, two knit stitches and then the, the um, increases on both sides. And I took the extra stitches and put them on the front. <laughs> so, so yeah, but that's my only modification that I've made. Beautiful. Yes, that's definitely going to be on my needles at some point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and, um, I'm sure it'll want to be on mine too. <laughs> and these are the two <laughs> two yarns. They, this is the anthracite and that's the blue wind. And I don't know if you can see, it's probably a little too close, but yeah, you think you can see the twisting of the core. So I, I was kind of surprised how they turned, how this turned out together. It was just sort of one of those days. I said, oh, I wonder how these two would look together. <laughs> so, so I knitted it and I go, oh, I really like that. I need to find something to do with it. Beautiful, yeah. So that's what I did. And I'm looking forward to getting that finished. <laughs> yeah, well, you're yes, making you're progress. Close. That's I'm good. Almost done. That's awesome. <laughs> Happy to be finished with that sleeve. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so what do you have? I know you've got right. whips. So the first one I have is the Monday Sweater by Petite Knit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, gosh. That is so gorgeous. Uh -huh. Oh. <laughs> Here it is. I know. Isn't that gorgeous? Yeah. Wow. So I've separated for the sleeves before I was way up here. So I've separated for the sleeves and worked on some of the body. And I just tried it on. Oh, it's a beautiful eye. Today, and it looks really pretty. Oh, I bet it does. Really like it. Those really colors like it. are oh. amazing. Thank you. That is so cool. I know. The yarns that I'm using, got two yarns. And the first one is this Pearl Soho Good Wool. And the colorway is Lemon Meringue. And the second one, I have a tag here for it, is the Sheepy Shire dandelion and colorway go fig or go home <laughs> it's cute it's it so cute 
So this is a fun one to knit. I mean, it's just, I'm just down to the knit, knit, knit all the way around, but it's just so fun to knit with the two yarns. Yeah, but that is some and softness. Yes, oh soft. Wow. Those two yarns are perfect together. Yeah, so is this where you were when you showed it last time? Yes. You've made a lot of progress so, then. Right. So I was been very busy with the being on Sleeve Island. So, you know, I've made, you know, I've made some pretty good progress though, you know, yeah. in between, but I didn't show this last episode. Wow. But, uh, so I've been knitting away on it now. That is gorgeous. It really is. So, really thank is. Thank you. Yeah. So. All right. So I have something that the girls haven't really seen and <laughs> it's a design that I'm working on I'm not publishing it um, I'm not even really taking very good notes as I go because I just had you know how you get something in your head and you want to give it a try uh -huh. um, so I have had this there's not really a name, I'm just calling it the plaid sweater. Um, but I have got Manos del Uruguay Alegria Grande in the skunk colorway. And I have had <laughs> <Skunk>. this. <laughs> yeah. But can you see that it's not just black and white? There's actually, every place the white is, there's almost a navy a blue that yeah on each side of it so i don't know if there's just a lot of probably a lot of blue dye in the black but i was fiddling around the other day and i made a gauge swatch i i saw a fray pattern that had a plaid thing going on and i liked it a little bit but i didn't like it a lot I didn't like the shape of the sweater. It had that folded under oh. bottom ribbing. It was very cropped, three quarter length sleeves and very cropped. But I kind of liked the concept of it. So I took what I liked from it and I'm completely redoing it. So I saw wow. a sweater a while ago that had a stand-up collar. I'm going to try and get this where there's not a whole lot of stuff up obstructing it. Um, where's the beginning around? Okay, so this would be the front. So I made a stand-up collar doing the same thing with the plaid. And it's a raglan sweater and as you can see I've done some of the plaid work on it um, these are just stripes but to get the vertical line you're actually knitting a purl stitch I don't know if you can see there's a purl ridge running here and you use a crochet hook to make this line after the fact I'm kind of doing it as I go because I want to see if I'm loving how it looks. So because of the white speckles and the blue, I've decided to use the Fiber Company Suro. And I've got angelic and divine as the colors. The white is angelic, the blue is divine. And here's the label for those. So, I'm just, what I did was the Andrea Maori, the DRK Everyday Sweater, I love the fit of that. And what I wanted to do was just figure out how many stitches I needed to cast on. And it has that nice big open, at least my version has a big open neckline. So that was what I wanted, but I didn't want to do ribbing. I wanted it to just be stockinette. So I did stockinette, folded it down, and I ended up doing three inches and folding it down at about, you know, with an inch and a half 
tall neck. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't lay against you, it kind of stands up. And I have seen sweaters designed like that where that it doesn't stand straight up, it kind of just, it's sort of an elegant look. And if it's not too busy, it I think it'll have the, <laughs> the look I'm going for. Wow. We'll see. More to come. That's really interesting. It's very pretty. It's, yeah. looks very holiday -y. Or just you know, like very, a winter's. Yeah. yeah it's very uh, pretty. Almost nice. like snow. Yes. Yes, it yeah. does. Yes. But I liked the blue with it. And um, of course, I started out, you had to, I had to go ahead and do the crochet chain into it because you have to be able to get to the back of the oh, knitting yeah. to that's where you're pulling you know the hook through to make the chain Is that what these loops are yeah these loops are here just waiting so i did i did it on the neck before i folded it down and then these loops are just ready for me to pick up um attach more white yarn and pick up so you can see all this stuff hanging it really doesn't get in the way when i'm knitting because it all falls in the other direction um I think the next time you see this in a couple of weeks, it will be lots further along and I will have separated for sleeves and I'll try to get it done to that point because it really doesn't matter. I could wait until I'm completely finished. But as your the sweater size increases with the raglan increases, as I get those vertical lines are spaced, it's like pearl knit knit pearl and then I either knit six or seven before I do the next um, set of them so it's sort of random but because it's continuing to get wider they're sort of growing out of the raglan as well does that make sense wow yes mm -hmm. like you can see them mm -hmm. here yes mm -hmm. so wow I'll Here's what I'm talking about there, sort of growing out of the raglan. You've got a lot of right here. yarn in the back, though. Oh, my gosh. Well, I do. Those are just the strings. Um, I set it up, and I started doing this um, last night to do more of them, um, do more of the vertical stripes uh -huh. that you add after the fact, after the knitting. Uh -huh. And I just... It, I found it easier to leave a longer tail. Mm -hmm. It just keeps me from having to tie it in the back because you can't really weave them in. It ties together nicely though and it won't show. But hmm. anyway, it'll be all cleaned up the next time you see it and hopefully it looks like a sweater that I want to wear. Otherwise, I'll rip it out and <laughs> you'll never see it again. <laughs> but I think I'm going to like it. I mm -hmm. Yeah. It's really, I love the colors. Yeah, I think it's going to be good. It'll be, it's a fun knit, surprisingly. Um, but it really does have my attention, so. Very Whoa. creative. Very much so. Okay, so what what else you got over there? Uh, I'm still working on my cart right. <laughs> good girl. <laughs> Wait a minute. It's coming there. around, but um, <sighs> this was made by Jenny Atkinson. And I'm knitting the size 49, and the yarn I'm using is Cascade 220 fingering and silver, uh, charcoal, white, and lemon. So, so uh, yes. let's see where to go. <clears throat> I had a sleeve in here. Anyway, this is the the body. I have the body completed. And I am, I'm loving it. Absolutely loving it. I did make the sleeves, this part a little deeper than I probably normally would have, but I wanted the, I wanted more of the Tweety part to show. So, and. You had the sleeve a minute ago. I know, here it is. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh! That. Yes, Yay. so I'm making progress. I did have to block it because I thought it was fitting too snugly, and so I still think it's snug. I mean, it doesn't have a lot of extra room, so I don't know what I'm gonna do. I might, I might, because this was really tight. The the 
The ribbing. The ribbing was mm -hmm. very, very tight. It looks like it's perfect now. I mean, it just Well, it's it still it's still pretty snug. Snug. Mm -hmm. It's probably snugger than you like. I told her I've got a 12 inch. What, you did this on a three? Three, yeah. Yeah, I've got a four. I have a four also, but I'm thinking then I'll have to do this maybe in a three. I, actually, I might just... I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm kind of like. Why don't you just start the other sleeve? Yeah, but then if it's bigger, then it's gonna look weird. One's big, one's small. Well, right. And if you start the other one, then it'll tell and do it with, with the next size up. It'll tell you that um, you really needed to go up because your gauge does look different. It looks tinier on your sleeve than it does here. I mean, that's really. Oh, and yeah. this hasn't even been blocked yet. Right. But it's. You mm -hmm. definitely, some people go on the small circumference knitting, knit a lot tighter, and you're probably one of them. I've never had that issue before. This, it's the same needle I used over here, so. Yeah. Anyway, I guess I have to figure out what I'm going to do there. I thought about doing two at one time, but I'll tell you what, keeping track of increases and doing the color work, it's... <laughs> Mm, it's a little challenging <laughs> and I've yes. already had to do 18 increases every fourth row and I think I finished all of those and then I go on to every sixth row so yeah I was thinking about going up a needle size and I don't know maybe I'll start here and go up a needle size <laughs> I, don't, I don't know we'll see yeah Anyway, I felt like I was getting some sock experience though, because right, this right. little ribbing is so small. Yeah. Right. It right. looks really pretty. Yeah, it's going to be gorgeous. Except I'm just going to tell you that you usually do your socks on a one. No. <laughs> yeah, well, depends on the sock. <laughs> that mean I'm going to wear them, except at home and around the house. So anyway, stay tuned. <laughs> Well, the sweater is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those pesky sleeves. Oh, and I was supposed to do those flat, and I just decided to do them in the round. So, you know, because I wanted to be able to fine, right? Yeah. Well, I, and I wanted to be able to try it on, and it's a good thing I did. I wish I would have tried, tried it on a long time ago and said, hmm, maybe I had to start over. <laughs> I'm good at doing that. <laughs> I think everybody is to some degree, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah so... Because it was going pretty fast, and I'm like, oh, maybe I can get this done by the end of the year. Uh, not anymore. Okay, so what do you have? Okay, my next whip is the Steam Valley Lady oh. Size. And that is by Along Anna or Along Avec Anna. <laughs> AKA her name is Anne Dervo. Oh. Wow. Oh my goodness. And lovely. I did not put a progress marker in it since the last time, but I was pretty much at the end of this blue section here. So since then I've split for the sleeves and I'm working in the round on the body. That's gorgeous. It is really pretty. Thank you. So I did all this, the color work is done. I love and low contrast. I just mm -hmm. think that's so rich. Just oh. so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, that right white really pops. It does, yeah. Yes, it really does. Yeah. Pretty. In real life, I don't know on the camera if you can see all those colors, but in real life, you can definitely see the blue and the purple popping against that mm -hmm. brown. So have you, have you tried it on? Mm-hmm. And you're happy? Mm-hmm. Good. Yeah. Makes a difference. That's good. Okay, so the yarns I'm using, <clears throat> the first one, which the main color, is a called Graphite, and it's the Upcycle Alpaca Blend 
by Knit Picks. And it's a worsted weight. And then all of the color work is The Wool of the Andes, also by Knit Picks. And here's what it looks like. And the colors I have are, okay, the top color is the Amethyst Heather and the white and the blue is the Sapphire Heather. Nice. So that is the main thing I'm working on now. I was not able to spit splice my upcycled. Oh, no kidding. Is it super wash? Alpaca, no. Huh. But it does have some content. It has 33% acrylic. Hmm. Oh, maybe the acrylic and is just enough to make it slippery and not stick together. Yeah, hmm. so I was disappointed huh, in that. Because I was able to spit splice the one I use for my Rubinia. Yeah, so I spit spliced it and everything and had, you know, a nice long tail and I'm knitting and knitting away and knitting away and all of a sudden this was like it was like Nutadin or something, you know, where oh, it just kind of just apart. came apart. Yeah. Oh, oh bummer. I'm like, oh, shoot. Bummer. So, shoot, man. Yeah, shoot, man. When you're used to spit splicing everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it seemed like it did spit splice at first, so. So these are 50 gram I'll try it again. These donuts. are 100. 100. 100. Mm -hmm. You've already used 100 grams on that? Yep. Wow. Yep. I know, That's right? a surprise. I would have thought you'd get a lot farther mm -hmm. than that with 100 grams. Uh -huh. You would think so. But that's kind of about right. I mean, this is a big part. I think this is like a 42 inches. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Across. I mean, yeah, you're like an inch below sleeve separation. Maybe that's right. I'm, and uh, I just can't remember. <laughs> so you use approximately, I mean, I know I'll use probably 350 yards or 350 grams at least 300, probably 300 and 350, I would say. Yeah. So that'll be about, about three balls. So pretty. So it's I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. I got plenty of yarn though, so. That's good. See how it goes. Wow. So. Okay. Is that all? Mm hmm Okay, so my next one is The Helia by Joanna Eng. and I am making progress on it. I am happy to say I've got one of the sleeves just about finished. And the thrill of knitting this thing is just beyond. I am using McMullen Fiber um, Co. The Luxury Yarns, and this is the Posh Sock in Sense and Sensibility. There we go. And here's the label for that and the McMullen Fiberco label and then I am holding that together so this is a fingering weight yarn and I'm holding that together with this gorgeous mohair um, they are such a good match and this one is Passion Yarns, and it's the Angora Love in the colorway Frozen. And these two together are making the most glorious fabric. So I'm working my way through the sleeve decreases. And it's really cool the way she's got the decreases on this. Um, let's see if I can get it where you can see the beauty of the lace down the sleeve. That's really all the pattern, you know. It's got this gorgeous wide raglan, but the beauty of the sleeve is really, <laughs> that is just like so, so good. And I cannot wait to be wearing this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's going to be so so nice. 
Um, we mentioned McMullen Fiber Co. was at Wool. Wool and the, Folk. Wool and Folk, yeah. I hope they did okay. Mm -hmm, um, me too. But I am going to be reaching out to her again soon. If you haven't bought yarn from them, I highly recommend you go out. As a matter of fact, I will link their um, website in the show notes because this is just some glorious yarn. So I'm having quite a good time working with that. Mm -hmm. It's very pretty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm working my way through my whips. Good I've for got, you. Good I girl. Am. Yep, I have way more project bags. You guys teased about having to do a GoFundMe page for Tammy because <laughs> I didn't have any project bags left, and I now have a stack of them in my cabinet all <laughs> folded up waiting for projects. Oh, no problem then. <laughs> huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So do you have... I have um, one more whip that I'm going to talk about today, and it's called the Rain Chain. And, and w once I got finished with my Rubinia, I decided it was time to get back to this. And this is... Ra so it's Rain Chain by Drops, and I'm making the extra large, and I'm using Drops Wish... Uh, colorway number eight, which is a gray beige, and that is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. I think Barn. it's yeah, I think it's gonna be really pretty. So don't want to step on. No, you. you're fine. Step on over here. So there you go. It's getting it's getting there, and this is a what they call so they called for English rib. And I don't know, I kept having to go down in needle size because it just grew and grew and grew. And so I decided to do fisherman's rib. And this is actually half fisherman's rib. Oh, because okay. on the back side, you just knit, knit all the way across. Really? Yes. It's ah, that's amazing. That's different. Yeah, that is yeah, so you knit beautiful. all the way across. And so... And, and the video I saw says, well, the back won't look like the front. And I'm like, well, I don't care. It's, all, it's, you know, right. it's in the back. <laughs> so, I mean, it did kind of come in here. I'm wondering if... I think that'll be fine, though. Because Didn't it'll you just block the bottom of it? No, I did not. But anyway, it'll stretch out and it'll be fine. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering why I did not knit this in the round. <laughs> um, I could have easily. Because yeah. you just it, you just keep going up until you know you're up to your shoulder, and then you do some shoulder shaping, and then that's it. So, and this is a free pattern, so um, I, I think, think it's going to be I think it's going to be a fun wear. And this is the yarn, and it is a little heathery, so it's got the gray and the kind of a beige with it. So, yeah. So I don't know how much further I have, but then you add back these. So, and I think there will be a picture here. So. There, there was. There was. There will be. <laughs> so anyway, hope this, it's a pretty fast knit, so I'm hoping to get it done soon. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> so you knit one and then you knit into the stitch below on the front side and then on the back side you just knit across? Knit across. Well, on the front side you, uh, the, well, the edges, the solvage edges you knit and then you purl and then you knit into the stitch below and then you purl and just continue that oh, all the way across. Oh, oh, oh. And then on the back side, you just knit all the way across. Otherwise, if it's a full fisherman's rib, apparently you um, do just plain knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl on the back. Huh. Yeah. And I can, hmm. you know, I'm like, I can't see any real difference. It's making that beautiful. It's gorgeous. Heavy. The, yeah. The chain. Chain. Yeah. <laughs> so. Like a rain chain. Duh. Yeah. Duh. <laughs> yeah. I didn't notice how that came in, but I think that'll be all right. Right. I think it's going to be fine. <laughs> it's going to, yeah, it's going to block out. It'll block out. Yeah. <laughs> Everything <laughs> blocks out. <laughs> I was thinking yes. you blocked the bottom of it once no, just to see. I did not. Not yet. 
All right. So. Okay, so we have something really exciting to talk about. We do. We're so yes. grateful for all of our viewers. Yes. We've decided to do a holiday giveaway. Yay. Woo! <laughs> That's always fun. And there won't just be one lucky viewer winning a prize. There'll be two. Right? That's right. Yes. So let's show some of the things that we have. You can take these and we've got these. So we have two beautiful Project, project bags <laughs> <laughs> that hold a full sweater in them. They are beautiful. Yeah, that's a cute one. That's what the inside looks like. It's very holiday-esque. <laughs> and the other one's got these beautiful snowflakes. That's gorgeous. And then it's got like, it looks like a peppermint stick on the inside. The red and white. So pretty. In fact, yeah, got my project in here. <laughs> I have my project in I don't one have of those. Mine here Do you today. not have yours here? I didn't bring mine. <laughs> um, also, when we were in Spain and Portugal this year, we brought back several of these beautiful cork pouches. And they're perfect to throw in your project bag with some of the notions that you're going to need. And one of those. So if, you, if we saw you at Rhinebeck, we likely gave you our business card with some of our things that I've made. Stitch markers here. Stitch markers, yeah. All covered Janet's face. Here, you, is that coming out? Yeah. I don't know. Well, it doesn't want to focus. Yeah, it's not focusing. And then either. there's another. I don't know. We'll see if this one will focus. Anyway, stitch markers. Each one gets a stitch marker. We're going to put it in the bag here. Why don't we just put them in the bag? Okay. And, and one of our viewers, Sharon Burr from Australia, has decided that um, she would like to gift two patterns from Rebecca Klo. And that is the Daft Days cardigan and the Daft Days shawl. And all the proceeds um, that Rebecca is making from this particular sweater till the end of the year are all going to the Fistula Foundation. So it's, it's a great... Um, foundation that mm -hmm. she's donating all this money to plus she's also donating an additional five thousand on top of that yeah and um so anyway so sharon is going to gift each of our winners also a pattern and um so we're going to need your ravelry name when for you, that when you win when, when you yeah. win <laughs> exactly that in your full name and address um so, so even though we're doing a giveaway, just remember, don't let the bots trick you up. Um, we'll have, you know, the word giveaway will be in our show notes and with the instructions on what we want you to do. But we talked about it beforehand mm -hmm. and we want you to tell us what you're working on for the holidays. Make sure you include the word holidays because we're going to actually use that to draw the prize. And um, so that's plural. And again, it'll be in our show notes, but we will announce the winner the next time on our next podcast. You'll hear it right here from the three of us. So mm -hmm. we will not um, make a comment and tell you you've won. We're not gonna ask you for any information. Um, it doesn't matter where you are in the world. We're going to pay right. for the shipping and get it to you because we want to celebrate the holidays mm -hmm. with all yeah. of you. Yeah, so we'll be podcasting in two more weeks. So if you get the, get those comments in, 
um, within a couple weeks because we'd like to go ahead and um, and then watch our next podcast so you can see if you won or not. <laughs> right. It's and time sensitive. It is right. It's very time yeah. sensitive because we want to get the patterns out before the end of the year. Um, since all the money is going to the Fistula yeah. Foundation. Right. So, and right. we really appreciate Sharon for doing this. Yeah, that's, that's really yeah. such a generous we, gift. It's such a is. thoughtful thing to do. Yeah. It's we the, love Rebecca Clo. We do. And yeah. I'm going to start working on one of her sweaters here really soon. Yep. Another cool. one because she's just coming cause. out with all these great right. sweaters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, before I started knitting on that plaid sweater, I was trying to figure out if I had enough yarn to do, what was the one she came up with last year that has the color work stripe across that band? It's not stripe, it's this really cool that she's got it it's in. It's down it. about narrow Georgia and ass. Ass. I know yeah. which one you're talking about. I can't about, think of the name I, of it. I couldn't tell you what it is either. I was short about yeah. 80 yards and I didn't want to play yarn chicken. Mm -hmm. So that's why I went ahead and did something different but mm -hmm. yeah she's got some gorgeous patterns yeah, out there she does she does mm -hmm. and it's so good of her to donate the proceeds from that pattern so yeah 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 it is really really valuable really yeah. nice i'm very likely going to buy the daft days i i asked i really wanted to test knit it for her but i wasn't chosen with so many people you know she's so popular so uh -huh. many people yeah. want to test yeah. knit so um but i I'm really happy to knit that and then be able to show all of you too. So yes. I think point. stick season is going to be the next one on my needles. Yep. Yeah, that's going to be nice. So, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I yeah. still have a Tolsta tea that um, it needs to jump on the needles. I In that oh. yarn that ta Mrs. Terry knit hers from oh, last right, year. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, it's right. just so gorgeous. I, I want... I need that. I just hope it's my colors. Now that all this color analysis stuff's coming out, you know, it's like, oh my God, am I even knitting in the right colors? <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. I think you can pretty much <laughs> tell if you put it on and it doesn't feel good, then you know it's not the right color. Yeah, I've, I've done, done that a couple before. Of those. Yeah. I, yeah, I've done that before. Mm -hmm. And it's exactly, you know, it's your magic numbers of your, your um, sleeve depth and your length and right. all the things mm -hmm. right ugh, it's like exactly oh, it looks bad okay so we're thirsty wait a minute i've got oh, some some dream knitting oh sorry you missed me last week well so. i'm still thirsty but you go right ahead <laughs> so so when we were in in uh at rhinebeck at the fairgrounds we went to let's see who was the Oh. oh gosh, and now I can't remember. Anyway, they had a letho that was on display, and so I think we all just kind of went, oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we, we all wanted one, and so so we bought yarn, and um, so I'm going to, this is going to be my main body, is the, the dark gray. Yeah. And then this is going to be my highlighted, which I just bought this because I knew I had to have it for this. And it's a Donegal Tweed Khaki Yarns Homespun and Colorway Amber. Oh, that's beautiful. And nice. having it right next. So this is the Studio Donegal Soft Donegal in a charcoal color. And I think those two will be really beautiful together. And then also the light gray in the soft, the studio donegal soft donegal again that's gorgeous and so one of our one of our viewers made a comment that when we started let her know because she wants to knit it along with us <laughs> so we, since we're all three going to do it we talked about possibly doing a knit along and i've set up a group on ravelry for us but um We'll have to see when. Yeah, We're, it'll yeah. be when you get back from your vacation. Yeah, it right? won't be until that will be like late January. January. So, yeah, so that's one thing, and I've been kind of going back and forth because there's a a specific project that somebody did, and it, it was just gorgeous. But I think I think I think that'll make me happy. Yeah, those colors, <laughs> those are, really colors are beautiful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I have one other that I just wanted to uh, talk about. It's called. Shake a Tail Feather by Rachel Ilsley. And that's a color work. And 
So I made a swatch with this, the Gielsk Tweed, and I'm not sure what the colorway is. Shade T9. <laughs> Sorry, that's the best I, there we go. Put it right side up. And I've had this for a while, so I decided to try a swatch where I knit two strands together to get the gauge that I needed, and it worked out beautifully. And this is such a gorgeous collar that, that I said, oh, that either either has to be the body or the, the feathers. And she suggested these two together. Yeah, this kind of color with it. I think that would be so good. Yeah. Here. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> just in case you can't see that, it just looks so pretty. Uh, you know, the camera throws off the blues, but in uh -huh. real life, that is just... It's sort of a greeny... It's got the, this color in speckle it. in yeah. it, and it uh -huh. just makes that color pop. pop. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the thought that I have to buy this kind of yeah. yarn. <laughs> well, there's a lot of yarn this color if you don't want to purchase it from overseas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, so, don't, I don't know what shipping is like from yeah. Stephen and Penelope because I bought this when we were there. Yeah. But it's some great yarn. So anyway, I'd like to get that on the needle soon. That's sometime this winter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. But I still have like, I still have projects that are sitting in bags and who knows how long yeah. <laughs> it will be. I have a whiskey glass shawl that I am sure has been up there for almost two years. And I think that might be where my other size five Chiago needles are. <laughs> I know, that's funny. It looks like a bandana at this point. You know, it's just a tiny little triangle. Mm -hmm. But I... I started making it for my one of our daughters and I was going so slow on it that I gave her mine oh. that she originally liked and I was knitting one in similar colors and I said here just take this one because it's taken me forever mm -hmm. and if I really want it I'll finish this other one but that's another it's kind of a dream net it's mm -hmm. one that I want to get going on mm -hmm. yeah well, I like looking at patterns, and every now and then something pops up, and, you know, I thought maybe it'd be fun to even have a pattern segment, you know, just go, yeah. okay, I just saw this, I just saw this. Yeah, that would be fun. Yeah. That would be pretty fun. We could definitely do that sometime. Yeah, so. All, All right. right. Now we're thirsty. Now we're thirsty. <laughs> See you at the tasting table. <laughs> okay, welcome back. So today we're tasting the Emeritus Hallberg Ranch. Um, it's a Pinot Noir from 2012 from the Russian River Valley. So, and it's a delicious wine. Mm -hmm. So this one is actually more in the middle between light and bold because it's a Pinot Noir, not a cab. Mm -hmm. um, it is more on the smooth side than the tannic. And it's definitely dry, but it is surprisingly a little more on the acidic side than it is soft. Hmm. And it does, it tastes more soft, and I think it might be because it's an 11 year uh, old, yeah. and it's very um, mellow. It's yeah, the acid has kind of mellowed some. I'm glad that I pulled this out. We have um, four or five more bottles in the cellar, and we need to drink them because I think it's time. Mm -hmm, I'm afraid mm -hmm. that if we don't drink it fast, it's going to get. <laughs> it'll you know, go. It'll be right. past its right. prime. Yeah. yeah. So oh, next time you have salmon, pull a bottle out. Yeah. That I, I like it with. I like Pinot Noir with pizza. No, oh, there's yeah, something about mm -hmm. that, that, like the spicy pepperoni mm -hmm. and the sausages and even the, the tomato, tomato. Mm -hmm. with a Pinot Noir. It just, I don't know, it just does something. Mm -hmm. But we should be tasting raspberry, red fruit, and cherries. And then there should be earthy mushroom and smoke notes. I get the smoke, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. the earthiness, yes. yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. And cedar, vanilla, and cola are the oaky notes. So you've got the fruit notes, the earthy notes, and then the oaky notes mm -hmm. that it's pulling from the oak. Yum. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
To me, this That's tastes true. more earthy than fruity. Yeah. Oh, yes. You know? Yeah. And it, is, it has some tannin to it because mm -hmm. it dries my tongue out. Yeah. Right. yeah. Which mm -hmm. kind of surprises me for one that, that's been bottled for 12 years. Well, yeah. it is. And the, so these notes are probably from when it was bottled. I don't know that this is people continuing. Mm hmm to taste along the way and adding notes. Maybe they are, I'm not really sure, but um, yeah, I mean, it's absolutely dry and you, I guess you would expect it all to kind of mellow along mm -hmm. oh, yeah. that, for that many yeah. years. Yeah. But you know, Pinots are not meant to lie down forever. So this um, came from what? Russian River Valley. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Yes. Yeah. yes. It's probably one we got at Zinks, I would imagine. Because I don't, I mean, I, we didn't buy it there. We didn't buy it at the vineyard. Hmm. Yeah, mm. it's nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm. So I wouldn't hesitate to go out and buy a bottle of it now. This says that the price point, where is the price point? They said it's unavailable for purchase. So. Oh, because it's a 2012. Yeah, um, it probably doesn't have the price point. I wonder what the new I vintage I think when is. I first took a picture of the bottle and pulled it up, I think it said it was around $44 a bottle. Oh, really? Yeah. Cool. So that's kind of high for a Pinot, I think. I mean, I don't mm, know. Not necessarily. I, I have noticed that the better Pinots are... More on get the, more on the high, yeah, high end side yeah. yeah well it's well worth it yes it is it's yum <laughs> yum, yum we saw a pinot noir last week we went to a sale up over at zinc's there was a pinot noir for 225 dollars seriously no. that Did was, you buy yes it? <laughs> No, no. <laughs> I, I laughed about Roger loving Pinos. I've teased about that on here before. He's not that big of a fan, so no, there's no way they would buy it. <laughs> no. I yeah. like a Pinot. I, I do. They, yeah. they are, yeah. There's a time and a place for them, and it's, mm -hmm. it's here and now. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Here we are. <laughs> well, so don't forget to enter in our giveaway because we're really, really thrilled to be able to offer yeah. you a couple of prizes, actually prize packages, and we are so ever so grateful to Sharon oh, for yeah. contributing patterns. And Very. you know, if you're not on Ravelry, we'll figure it out if you happen to be the winner. We'll we'll make sure we can figure out a way to get it to you. We'll just right get with Rebecca and see what maybe she can do, direct or whatever. Um, but uh, anyway, I guess until next time, so make sure you look at the show notes so you know how to enter. You don't want to get holidays, that wrong. Yeah. Holidays. Yeah. Holidays. Holidays. Yeah. So, so in the meantime, if, if you, you can't, can't be with the wine you love, love the wine you're with. Cheers. Cheers. It's really good. It is really, really mm -hmm. good. Yum, Ooh, yum. Yes. <laughs>